Hey guys, Fabulik here today and welcome to a very first look at Planet Coaster. This is the first alpha and you will be able to play this tomorrow. So I went to an event uh, just last week where we got to get hands on with the game, play it, sit down with the developers and have a chat as we went through it. We did record live commentary there. Unfortunately, it sounds like this. Hey guys, Fabulik week here today and welcome to Planet Coast. And that's why I don't really want to use it for this video. Um, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep the video here. We're going to go through the video. We're going to talk about everything that we're sort of seeing here. So uh, just to reiterate, this is not the full game. Uh, the full game isn't slated to come out for about six months or so. Uh, so this is the uh, the sort of very first alpha. And they're going to be updating this uh, in weeks uh, at a time. So I don't, they didn't exactly say, but I would imagine like two to three weeks, uh, there'll be a new alpha, a new alpha version, maybe with something new, something fixed, that kind of stuff. So it's going to be frequently updated uh, going throughout it. Now, it's important to note that this alpha, it, it only has uh, sort of a few of the core features in there at the moment. So obviously you have, your, you have the paths, you have the people throughout the park, you have the modular building, and you have some of the flat rides. Now, of course, uh, when you do download it, you can view these parks that we have right here. And it, it does have all the coasters in it, but you just can't build the coasters or customize them just yet. I mean, look, look at the, the level of detail in this thing is beautiful. So um, we're going to jump on the coaster now, I believe. So they do have coaster camps, so you can get in there and ride the coasters right now, which is pretty sweet. So we are going to ride this coaster. I'm just looking at the uh, little controls there, trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so they have the coasters in there, and they did show us uh, some of the tools or how they work, but they're, they're, they're basically they're not ready. Uh, they're, they're not at the stage where you know, they're ready to release it to the public because what they want to do is make sure uh, the features they are releasing are, you know, good enough that people can start getting their hands on them, testing them out and uh, giving, you know, useful feedback because they're using the alpha as a way to get feedback uh, on things that need to be changed, things that need to be fixed and all that kind of stuff. So if you do get your hands on this and you think that something should be done a different way, don't uh, feel afraid to sort of let them know because that's exactly what they're using this alpha for that it's not just like here's a feature it's not changing that's it done and dusted they want to hear the feedback and they want to change things up as they go along uh, but yeah this game seriously is starting to it, it looks beautiful it looks just as beautiful as it does in all of the trailers they've been showing <laughs> I, I honestly couldn't believe it when I went in there and uh it was, it's just, it was super exciting. It was such a fantastic atmosphere. Um, and you can see, so this coaster station, it, you'll see me in a second. It is not one big piece that just gets placed down. It is 100% modular and the modular buildings, uh, in the game right now, uh, they're awesome. They are they are so awesome. We're going to get into some building of that later. But at the moment, you can see now we can actually pick up the coaster station or the building that is around the, the actual coaster station that you can see there. And we can move it. We can put it wherever we want or we can put it back. Uh, you can edit that. So yeah, the, it, that is just built around the coaster station. And uh, you could put the station on the ground, in the air, wherever you want. Uh, it's completely customizable customizable in that manner so you can see here it's all individual little parts different wall pieces of that kind of stuff now there's no uh, colors at the moment on so you can't recolor rides or wall pieces just yet but that is definitely something that is coming they, that is confirmed there will be full-on color choice uh just they give you like a color color wheel kind of thing you can choose any color you want uh so that is coming um right so we're going to clear out a little bit of space just here because i want to check out one of the flat rides uh so you guys can see how the rides work how you build them how you do entrances and exits and that kind of stuff so we're just picking out uh rich's favorite uh flat ride at the moment rich was the uh producer that I was with uh, so he was sort of walking me through this and it, it would have been great to have the live commentary but unfortunately it, it does sound like garbage which is un <laughs> is unfortunate but I would rather show you game footage than uh, and, and post commentator than nothing at all unfortunately I guess the only downside to doing it this way is that we don't get any of the game audio which is a little bit upsetting but don't worry if you come back tomorrow I will do some new videos on it because the alpha will be out tomorrow for everybody who has the early bird uh version of the game now so we can lift up you can see us rotating the ride doing free rotation which is obviously possible and then we have the lifting up of the ride uh using shift to move it up and down and my camera is kind of going all over the place at the moment uh <laughs> it is it is very much in alpha uh this game is six at least six months away from launch so if there are any little hiccups like that 
uh, please put it down to the fact that it's an alpha and not a finished game. So I was just showing the incredible attention to detail on these rides. Uh, so every like nut and bolt that they've put into the, the game, uh, every support is done in a realistic manner. And uh, I think we're going to go over and look at the coasters now. So uh, again, it would have been great to have Rich explain this himself, but they've gone to painstaking lengths to make sure the supports on the coasters are realistic and the way that they uh, constructed looks real and it, it, it makes sense. Because uh, what I said to him is, I, I said, while not everyone, you know, not not an average player, we, we don't know what makes uh, a realistic coaster, but we certainly know what makes a coaster look unrealistic. So you could imagine if you just had vertical supports going straight down, you could, you could be like, eh, it's kind of dodgy, but uh, you have all of these additional supports that are, uh, as they've described them, accurate, 100% accurate, exactly how it would be done in the real world. Uh, so that's really exciting to see. And we, if you do zoom in, and I'm, I can't remember if I do, I probably do at some point. If you do look closer at the supports on the on the coasters, uh, you do see all the nuts and bolts, every join as it would be physically represented. So they they did drill this in, you know, very uh, very often that they have gone to painstaking lengths to make sure everything is as realistic as possible, and they have made it clear that every ride that is in this game or that will be in this game, are real rides that exist. They haven't made anything up. So if something looks crazy and unbelievable, it's not made up. It is something that exists somewhere. Uh, they take uh, the inspiration from the real rides, and then they uh, they they do theme them themselves. So they give them special themes and special looks. But that ride itself, the underlying mechanism, does exist somewhere. So we've just put on the entrance and the exit, and we're building the pathways now. And we were just discussing, because um, the path building is, is very, very good at the moment, but it could definitely use some work. We're just discussing that there's, I, I wanted to do sort of a spiraling pathway going down and around the ride. Uh, and that he said that's something they want to be able to, you know, make possible. Currently, it's not. So instead, we're kind of building a little janky path that's going down, curving, <laughs> going around uh, the ride. Because that's the best we can do at the moment. But again, uh, that's why, uh, so th with this alpha, they they want they want the feedback. They, they want it all. So if there's, if you're like, why why can't we do this or this should be a thing uh you got to let them know one of the things i did bring up specifically uh because it's something that that's in the sims 4 that i thought was pretty cool is the uh, the ability to scale uh scenery items so i would like to like be able to make a rock bigger or smaller or make i don't know whatever item it is bigger or smaller because then you have a lot more versatility with the same amount of items so that would be pretty cool to see i think but anyway, so we've got our little queue pathway there. And on the right-hand side where that uh, UI is, that is your sort of little checklist to make your ride work. Uh, that there is our ticket booth. And I believe I'm about to zoom in on our little uh, ticket collector because the uh, just the characters in this game are fantastic and the details as well. Like, I, I was amazed just looking this close up, the fact that it all still looks really, really good. And just like the, the shininess on the name badge and on the belt buckle, that there's those sort of details. And the, the animations of them, as the person is even just standing there still, they're always moving, they're always doing something. They have put incredible, you know, attention to detail into this, and I love it. And I don't know if this is sounding like some crazy sales pitch for this game. I'm, I apologize if it is, but I can 100% confirm that they have not given me any money to talk about, talk up the game. I mean, yes, they did fly me over uh, to check out the event and they put me up in a hotel. I will make that clear. They did bring me to the event, but I am under no obligation to say this game is good. I, I legitimately think that it is. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes uh, because this is still very early days. And because uh, uh, I, I did do an interview with uh, Johnny Watts, the CTO of Frontier, and you can check that out. I will hopefully link that down below on this video. And it was kind of just a more, more or less a generic interview about, you know, him and Frontier as a company and what they've done in the past. Because obviously uh, the guys that are making Planet Coaster, they they actually made uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, which was arguably the, well, not arguably, it was the last full Roller Coaster, you know, or not Roller Coaster, full theme park simulation game. That was the last full game like that. They also did Scream Ride a couple years ago uh, for Xbox One. Uh, they also did uh, Zoo Tycoon for, for Xbox One as well, um, and they did Coaster Crazy. So they've they've done basically they've done a lot of uh, theme park games. They I think they even worked partially on some of the expansion packs for Roller Coaster Tycoon Two way back in the day. Uh, so they they've been doing these games for years and years and years. And I I don't know why because <laughs> understandably no one answered it when I asked it, but uh, I don't know why Frontier didn't develop the new Rollercoaster Tycoon, uh, because it, it would have made sense. But I, I imagine 
uh, either the case probably was that they were already working on Planet Coaster, or the, the fact is Frontier is a self-publishing company now. They they publish their own games. They never used to. They used to use, you know, Atari, for example, or Microsoft to publish their games out. But now they're making their own games such as Elite Dangerous and Planet Coaster, and they're publishing them for themselves. So I guess it makes sense that they didn't really want to do it that way. But I don't know. Nobody actually answered that. Um, <laughs> there's a there's an interesting relationship between them and Atari, I guess. Uh, but anyway, there's my crazy exit path for the ride as well. As you can see, they're coming down. Uh, and that's our little ride there. So it's pretty cool. So um, I think... I can't remember what I'm going to do now. I just guess I'll keep talking about stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, this game... Oh, man. I am excited. I'm excited. I mean, I would have... There's no terrain. We, can't, we couldn't do anything with the terrain in the game yet, which is why... Um, you know, I can't change anything on the, on the ground, but there's some crazy things you can do. And I'm sure some of the other people that went to the event uh, showed that off at some point. Um, I would have loved to load up another world, but for some reason, I don't know if I started recording late or that I was, they made me finish early, but we, we were supposed to have like an hour to play slash record the game. And it was about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of an intro. So we, you know, they, they taught us how to play it and then we could record. So I should have, I should have had about 45 minutes of video, but... Uh, it ended at 25 for some reason, and I, I don't know why. Um, and also the audio wasn't great, which is unfortunate, but in any case, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I, just, I just put down the Kraken, which would make a lot more sense if you used the terrain tools and you put like a mountain around it and all that kind of stuff. That would have been uh, kind of cool. But you get the idea of the, uh, the sort of animatronics. Actually, that was the thing I was going to mention. So uh, when I think, I think it was in the interview I did with Johnny Watts, he was talking about... Um, they did, I think they did a project for Disney, Disney, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they had to do animations for it, and the animations had to be approved by Disney and Pixar, and they both were blown away by them, and I, t I tell you what, if you've been keeping up with Planet Coaster and watching the little videos they're putting on their channel of the reactions of the, the people throughout the park, and just the animations in general, they are beautiful, and it adds uh, so much of, like, just character and liveliness to the park. It's fantastic. Uh, so I put some rocks underneath the ride and I'm putting some trees around it now just to make it look like it's not floating. Um, one really, really helpful thing with the scenery is that, and you may have seen it just then, it there, there, nothing like intersects. Like you can, well, I mean, it does intersect, I guess. There's no clipping on everything. So you can put a rock inside of a tree. You can put a rock on top of a pathway. You can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you don't have to worry about things not being out of place in certain places which is really really nice uh, when it comes to decorating something uh, and it just makes placing items so much easier you can't at the moment so with buildings and I think we're going to talk about them a little bit more now by the looks of what I'm doing with the camera that building there that's one big building that I can pick up and move and I can duplicate it and I will be able to share it on the in-game uh, sharing feature I'm not exactly they, they, it's not in the game yet but the idea is you'll be able to share this up to I don't know, like a thing in the game and you can browse for other items because, I don't know, it's not Steam Workshop because it's not going to be on Steam at the beginning, but um, you share it on something. Anyway, on their internal game service, you can get it on, get it through the game. So you share it into the game and then people can download your buildings, that kind of stuff. Um, I asked if that was going to be included with the scenery because you can build some crazy things with rocks and, and just trees and that as well. So, um, and they said that, uh, yeah, that's something they want to do. At the moment, you can't group scenery items, but that would be really useful uh, when working with rocks. So that is something that they are looking to do. Now we are looking at the shops, facilities, and toilet like toilets and shops and all that kind of stuff. And they are all just modular sort of wall pieces. So these are all uh, little buildings that will place... Uh, basically, you can see it's like a little box. It's designed to be built into a modular building. So... Whereas in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, for example, they were all their individual stores uh, that had the sort of design. Now, instead of doing it that way, it's just like, it's like a wall piece. You, you put it down and you can just build walls around it and build whatever structure you want. So it does make uh, making like kind of like, a, I guess, a shopping mall area or an arcade area much easier to do. And as, it, as you can see, I could even stack it a little bit. But here's where we get our first a good look at the modular building, which uh, you may... I mean, at first glance, it's a similar system to Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 in that uh, each wall is, you know, one grid tile and that you can rotate them around. And you'll see in a minute, I, they even have a beautiful search feature, which is very, very handy and filtering and all that kind of stuff. So very nice UI to work with. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely better than Rollercoaster Tycoon 3. I was just mentioning to Rich in the video, if I recall, that in the future they will have proper categories because at the moment everything's just on one, you know, 
menu so they will be all categorized properly later on but anyway so you can see here as you're building as we're in build mode uh as we sort of place the next piece it generates the grid around us so everything in this existing grid that we're placing now will be part of the same building so uh when you exit edit mode even if it's not attached to like the the walls there will be part of the same building now you can see with the walls that uh, yeah they work very similarly uh, similarly to uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon Three, so you can rotate them around. Uh, but you know it's much more intuitive than it was. What what was it like ten years ago now? Um, when did that? No, it was twelve years ago now. Yeah, anyway, it's much more intuitive than that. So you can place the walls on the inside or the outside of the grid, just like before, and you sort of place them around like this. And one really, really helpful thing that you'll see in a moment uh, for building big structures is that you can select uh, the wall pieces and everything and then just duplicate them in build mode and place them and sort of stack them up really easily. So there's a lot more sort of ergonomics and, and just thought gone into this. So it makes building much, much easier, <laughs> essentially. So you can see we can just easily stack them just like you would normally, or we can go through. I think you have to hold down control while doing this. So you select each wall piece that you would want to copy. And I missed one just there. You select them up and uh, then we can simply click on the duplicate button or you do control D, which is unfortunately kind of confusing. I would much prefer that to be control C, but we found out, uh, I think it was um, when Biffa was doing, <laughs> he was building something, did control C and it changes the way the camera works. And then the camera was confusing. Anyway, don't use control C, use control D. And as you can see, you stack it up very, very quickly, which means that building uh, large structures is going to be so much easier. You could, you could imagine building a city. So you could build one level of a skyscraper. So you get all the windows, all the detailing, then you just select that entire level, duplicate it up and up and up and up. And as how, however high you want to go, it'll be very, very quick and easy to do that, which I think is pretty exciting uh, to be able to do that. So we're just going to connect up our little store now. It, it, it's not a beautiful building, but it was, I didn't have a lot of time to sort of make something nice. So I built something that, uh, you know, you get the idea of anyway, you, you can kind of see what's going on there. So playing around with the path now as well. So we got the, I'm just showing up the super wide paths and the way that those work. So uh, in this game, the, uh, the, the people work very much like fluid dynamics. Uh, and that might sound completely like, you're like what, are you, what are you talking about? But basically, uh, the bigger the pathway, the more people that can walk on it and the faster they can walk. If you had a park that had loads of people in it, maybe like, I don't know, let's say 2,000 people and you only had the smallest of small pathways, they would all be jammed in together. They're not going to clip through each other because they don't do that. Uh, they would jam in together and walk slower because there's not enough room. So... What Rich was saying when I was playing with him is that you want to have, at the entrance of your park, nice big pathways. And as you can see, we're looking above now, it branches off into smaller pathways as you go through the park because you don't need bigger pathways everywhere. So you want your main pathways to be as big as possible because the people will use it. They do spread out. They do walk naturally like real humans would. They don't... It's not like... 12 years ago when they walked on one grid tile. Uh, they will use the entire pathway and you need to use the entire pathway. It is something that you actually have to pay attention to. Uh, and of course, you're not going to want to build big pathways everywhere because when uh, the game actually has all the business management in it and the money, uh, obviously bigger pathways are going to cost you more money to build and to maintain. So you need to find the balance between uh, having the big pathway and you know, an effectively priced pathway. Um, obviously, there's no there's no money in the game just yet. It's just currently sandbox, but that is something that they are very adamant about getting. You know, perfect. They uh, especially Johnny. He was uh, he was very uh, he was very enthusiastic about the, the sort of business management has to be spot on because that is a huge part of the game. That is a huge part of the game that needs to be right, and that was very exciting to hear because while the sandbox is all very well and good. I, one of my favorite things about Roller Coaster Tycoon is making the money, or in this case, Planet Coaster, is making the money to build up my park and make things better. So uh, they're, they're very, you know, that is something that is going to come and it's definitely going to be in the game uh, and that will be exciting to see. But anyway, so here is where we go into placing windows. And as you can see, you can place them anywhere on the wall or I think if you hold down, I think it's Alt, uh, it will snap into the middle of each wall piece. So if you were uh, wanting to get it precisely correct, uh, you can do that. Or if you want to put it anywhere, you can do that as well. So at the moment, the current themes that are in the game is like piratey and generic. Uh, there are more themes coming. More themes definitely coming. So I kind of used a weird window that didn't really match. But uh, yeah, so that's how windows work. They're not they're not uh, specific wall pieces like they were uh, in previous games. So they uh, 
uh, separate decorations that you put on. And we can search for signage now. I'm using the search right there. You can see how quick it is to find exactly what we're after. We have the Chief Beef stall. So we're getting the Chief Beef signage to go with it. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I I love... I love the art in this game. Like, they, like everything does look... It, it really does look beautiful. Uh, all, like, all the signage and all the items and the people. It is... If nothing else, it is a beautiful game. Uh, it really, really is. And you can't deny that at all. Uh, I mean, you could deny it if you wanted to, but... I mean, it's not. It, it is It is beautiful. <laughs> it really, really is. Um, so yeah, so just checking out some of the scenery items. Got some little uh, sort of police lights that I'm just chucking on the top there. And now the, the cool thing is, because as I said earlier, that uh, you can intersect items without them worrying about, you know, getting in the way of... Um, uh, like a, another wall or something. So you can see those lights that are kind of on top of the wall there. When I go to put it in a roof, you can imagine in pre, like in, in old games, that it would be like, oh, you can't put it there because there's lights in the way. Oh, but it's so, it's so nice not to have to worry about that. It's such a small thing, but uh, it's great. So I'm just going for a flat roof on this because we didn't have a lot of time. Like I've mentioned many times, we only have like four minutes left currently. So I kind of just went with a flat roof, made an ugly ass building, and that's all that I needed to do. Uh, you can see sort of all the different uh, heights you can put out there. I think you can uh, go into like a free placement mode so it doesn't snap to a certain height. I'm not 100% on that, but um, yeah. Uh, so that is my beautiful chief beef store. Uh, <laughs> just showing you basically modular building. So now that building, when we exit edit mode, uh, is something that we can pick up. We can move it anywhere else in the park. We can even just duplicate it, put another one somewhere else, and then... That's just how that works. So I think that's really, really cool. I don't know. They didn't mention, and I didn't ask. I can't, if there's a way to just save buildings into my own menu. I imagine there is. So because we'll be able to share the buildings, I imagine there's somewhere we can save them so we can quickly access them later, but they didn't mention anything about that. Uh, but here I'm just showing uh, that you can indeed uh, create sort of diagonal portions of buildings at the moment. Um, there's no way to weld buildings together. And by that, I mean, like, if I started creating a diagonal part of this building, it will indeed be a separate building. So these two aren't going to be joined together whatsoever. Uh, but they did mention that that is something that they are fully intending to do, is the ability to merge uh, uh, modular buildings together so that you would have a diagonal piece that would merge uh, into the regular building and then it would all be saved as one because at the moment they're separate and that's not ideal for sharing your creation so uh, that is something that they are definitely working on there uh, and if you do have questions please post them down below because I got so much information on that day and um, we talked about so much and I I'm probably missing out on something um, and so if you do have a question leave it down below because I'm sure I will have an answer to it uh, and if not then we'll have an answer soon, probably. Um, but yeah, leave your questions down below if there's something that you want to know about, because we did see pretty much everything there was to see in the game right now. Uh, so we're just having a look at some more scenery, I guess. I can't, I can't remember what I'm doing now. I think I'm just stacking rocks because I felt like it. Um, but yeah, so... I mean, Planet Coaster, I am undeniably excited to see where this game goes. It is, it is, it's the game... And people are making comparisons, and I totally agree with it. it it's doing, it's pulling a city skylines, you know. Uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon World is SimCity, and Planet Coaster is City Skylines. You know, it's it's the game that is doing it right, is doing it how it should be done. I mean, and I, I can't wait to see where it goes. These uh, The guys of Frontier have years and years and years and years and years of experience doing coaster games. So they know what they're on about. They've had people doing coasters themselves like programming coasters and designing them for games for forever. I, I mean, it's crazy. So you, you can you know it's going to be done. It's going to be done, and it's going to be done really, really well. And they did make sure to hammer that home, that uh, all the coasters are as realistic as possible. And you can see the detail on the tracks there with all the little nuts and bolts and everything, and just the shine on it. And I wish you could hear it right now, because the sound effects as well are fantastic. They were mentioning how they shut down a theme park for, I think, two or three days and just went around and recorded sounds on everything so they could get uh, get everything going. But um, we're coming near the end of the little gameplay footage here, and um, that's that's what I've got to show you. So that that's all for that I have for today and the interview, which you can click down below. But the the early bird alpha is out tomorrow uh, for everybody. So if you wanted to buy into it, it's pretty expensive, and I, I wish it wasn't. I think it it's I think it's like forty five pounds, which I think is like seventy something dollars. It's pretty expensive. Um, so I'm not gonna 
I'm not, like I said, they haven't paid me to sell out for them. <laughs> I'm not going to make you buy it, but if you're interested, check it out. Or you can wait, because the game still isn't coming out for another six months, and they're going to be updating. Uh, if you're still apprehensive, just wait, essentially. But uh, if you did want to check it out, you can. Um, but that's it for me. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this first look, uh, but thanks for watching. I will see you next time, and have an awesome day.